Hey guys, welcome back. So the full length in-depth tutorial on this topic will be available on our soon to launch membership. You can find more information about that and join the waitlist at ZachariasHorsemanship.com slash Successful Horsemen. So before we get into this video, I just want to address a few things really quick that have been going on with us lately. Um, first of all, thank you so much to each one of you who subscribed and helped us get past the 8500 subscriber mark. I know that's not a big number in comparison to some of these other channels, but for us it is a milestone, so thank you so much. As many of you have probably noticed, there's been quite a lag in our video publishing lately, and that is because a few months ago, Sid actually broke his collarbone in a non-horse related accident. So during that time, our main goal was just to make sure that every horse was getting ridden and worked every day, um, and that everyone was getting consistent education. So the video filming, editing, production, all kind of went on a back burner until now. It was a huge setback, but we're finally getting back on track. And so we're thankful to those of you who have stuck with us, and I will definitely keep you posted on when that membership is coming out and try to put videos out much more consistently now. So thank you again for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get started. Hey guys, I'm Jacqueline Zacharias. Today, I wanna to talk to you about the first three ground exercises every horse should know. I'm gonna address why these exercises are so important and how to start teaching them to your horse from day one. This is Legend here. This is his first session. We had a round penny uh, session the other day, but today we're gonna to get into it and start his training. And I'm gonna show you how I walk through these exercises. Let's get started. Okay, so the first exercise that we're gonna work with on this horse is the hip yield or the disengage. And the reason we work on this first is because if you have someone lunge a horse off on a big circle starting right away, what happens is, is that that horse can lock that hip and kind of get it pointed toward people and it puts them in a really compromised, dangerous situation. Or if that horse has some hip control and he already has a little bit of respect for you uh, in that hip yield, then you're less likely to get yourself hurt the first time you send that horse off into a circle. Now, I would not recommend getting your horse fresh out of a stall or something and going to work on target exercise like this because when you start putting pressure on the hip back there, they can get a little bit uh, defensive at times and you may end up getting yourself hurt too. So be cautious of that. If you do have a really fresh horse that has a lot of energy, turn them out in a paddock somewhere, turn them out in your arena, let him run, play, be a horse for a while before you start working on this so that he doesn't have a lot of extra energy that he wants to put somewhere and could use it negatively. All right, let's get started. So you'll notice I'm holding my stick in an overhand position. I don't, I don't turn it over like this. Um, I'm gonna keep my hand over like this. And, and when I approach this horse, I'm gonna raise up and use a swinging motion like this, okay? I'm gonna walk toward this horse in an arc motion. I don't walk up straight next to his side. And I'm gonna start walking toward the hip, just walking toward the hip. And notice how his shoulder's swinging toward me. So I'm gonna bring that hand up there. And I'm just gonna let him have that. He doesn't know what he did yet, but that's okay. I'm gonna let him sniff the stick. He's still very curious about everything. And we'll do it again. Keep this rope about three feet long here so that he doesn't have enough room to run off, but also to where he has enough room to learn how to make the right decision. I'm not trying to hold this horse in place and make him do this hip yield. We're trying to teach him how to move that hip away from us on his own. So we're using our energy to teach him that. Notice how every time I step away, he kind of walks in toward me. We gotta fix that too. So I'm gonna step over here, follow an arc motion, go toward that hip, raise my hand up, to block, there we go, that was beautiful. That was very, very nice. What we're looking for in this hip yield is for this inside hind foot to cross over that other hind foot, just like it did a moment ago, okay? That creates a very balanced move. The horse isn't sucking back, he's not going forward. Let's do it one more time, okay? Crouch down here, notice how he's walking forward, so he doesn't have a good understanding of what this hip yield is, he just got lucky a couple times. Gently ask him to back up, and have him stand. Do it again, raise my hand up to block, it, block that nose right there. Horses get a little bit protective when you start working on this stuff and they wanna swing that neck across and block you. So I'm gonna keep my hand raised up here and just make sure that he can't back up and, there we go, that was a good step. Back up and block me on that shoulder there. Okay. There, good. Right there, he didn't get a very nice step in the hip, but what I liked was that he stopped that front end and held it steady for a moment while that hip moved around. Pay close attention to what I'm doing with my left hand. You'll notice that I don't pull the horse around, I push that hip away. If there comes a point where that horse is kind of running forward and stuff, you'll notice I'll lift my hand up and kind of anchor him, but I don't drag the horse's head to his hip. All right, let's step away from the camera here. Come on, big guy. Okay, let's do this again. 
but now he's not really paying attention. I'm going to stroke him with the stick first before I make contact, and then I'll tap him lightly. There you go. What you don't ever want to do, especially on a field like a horse like this, is to walk up there and be adding energy and he's not expecting it and then suddenly you smack him on the hip with the stick. You can get quite a reaction from some horses if you do that. So be very careful not to do it. Often if I'm working like this and I know that I'm going to have to add a little energy to get that horse woken up, but I don't want to go and just kind of pop him right there right away. I'll take the stick and just kind of stroke him on the butt first so I can make contact and then I step that hip around and notice he's just kind of drifting that shoulder toward me. He's not really, he's not really moving that hip away. So now I'm adding a little bit of energy with the stick. Good job. He's a little confused there, but he figured it out. Good boy. Yeah, it's a stick. This again, get his attention, gently stroke his hip, start bumping that on his hind quarter there. There it was. Nice step. Good boy. Big sigh. He's looking and chewing. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Again. Starting to get a little better, but notice that shoulder keeps, there it is. That shoulder kept following me and I just stayed with him until that shoulder stopped and that hip moved away. There it was, very nice. All right, guys, so for the sake of the video, we're not gonna continue to work on this longer. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the opposite side, but you need to work on this until your horse gets consistent with both sides and clearly understands when you crouch down and you direct energy toward that hip, he knows to step away without trying to speed up or squirt forward or run faster, okay? Okay, the next exercise we're gonna work on is the backup. The reason this is so important is because this kind of ties into all your other maneuvers. If you need speed control, if your horse is too worried or something, then when you pick up and put pressure on him, he understands how to stop those feet and back up. Often when you apply pressure to a horse, the first thing they want to do is squirt forward, run off, go faster. They don't want to slow down. So we want to get this horse in a more neutral frame of mind and understand that he can slow those feet down, stop, and back up when we ask him to, all right? Good boy. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually take this rope up right next to the halter, take my stick down here next to your chest, gently apply that pressure, and tap there. Often horses have an idea of how to back up with pressure on the halter, so that's what we're gonna work with first, okay? We're gonna ask those feet to back up, and then I'm gonna take that stick and tap a little more. Good job. And when he hustles with those feet, then I'm gonna release. Good boy, he's still looking around quite a bit. Once again, take hold of that lead rope down there, gently apply pressure, and tap a little bit. There we go, he's sped up on those feet, and I'll release, okay? Okay. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to tie these two cues together in a way the horse uh, that's much more easy for this horse to understand. If I were to just go in here without giving that horse any um, any uh, idea of what I was asking for and just kind of start tapping out his chest, I might get a backup, but I might also have the horse run off sideways one way or the other or try to go forward. Whatever the case may be, a lot of times horses try to run into pressure instead of away from it. So this allows the horse to pick up on what that means without a lot of confusion. Very nice. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and do this again, and this time I'll just use the stick. I want to bring this up here and tap that chest. Very nice, okay? Release, bring it up again. Good job. Once again, gently raise that stick up, tap him on his chest. There we go, good job. Raise that stick up. Very nice, and we'll get just a few more steps here. That was beautiful. Okay, he's doing very well with this backup exercise. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and put my rope at about six feet or so. This allows me to have a little bit better contact with the horse. I don't like to get at the end of my rope because if your horse has some confusion about it and he decides to walk forward and step on the rope or he goes left or right, um, you're gonna have a hard time collecting him back up again and getting that maneuver done. So we're gonna give him about six feet in the rope here and he's moving around quite a bit. So I'm just gonna move him back in place here. There we go and ask him to stand there. Okay, so I'm gonna wiggle with my rope here just lightly. I'm gonna walk forward, put some energy on it. That was really beautiful. And then I'm gonna release. Good job. He's walking back forward again, so we're just going to ask him to step back there. Good job. There we go. So anytime he springs back forward like that, then I'm just going to kind of ask him to reset and stand there. He doesn't have to constantly step forward back up to me. He's looking for security right now, and I'm just asking him to take a, take a little bit of accountability and tell him, he's, you're okay right there, okay? He needs to learn that he'll be fine standing away from me. There we go. Nope. There we go. Good job. Okay. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and wiggle again, walk, wave my stick. There we go. Good job. Wiggle, wave, walk. Very nice. Let's do it again. There we go. Good job. And I don't wait too long before I make these progressions here, okay? I don't just hop into it and kind of start whacking that horse and stuff. I give him ample notice, but I don't stay there for five minutes at a time, wiggling the rope, wiggling the rope, wiggling the rope, because what happens is that the horse will fall asleep before he has a chance to respond. And then when you do finally get to this stage where you're tapping him on the legs, he's already, like you startle him, you just scare him. And so then he has more anxiety about the maneuver. So make it a decent rhythm there. Don't wait too long before going to the next phase of energy. Go ahead and wiggle, almost. There's his first step there. A little more energy, good boy, good job. You're okay, all right, go ahead and wiggle that rope. There it is, he's already backing up right off that wiggle. That was beautiful, very good, okay. Excellent effort on his part. He did a very, very good job with that for his first day, learning the backup. All these steps will still apply if your horse is stickier, if he's a little pushier. You'll still do these exact same things. This horse was a great example. He let me walk through the phases of this exercise very cleanly and quickly. And I really liked that it allowed me to show it to you. But keep in mind that if your horse has a little bit more of a problem with this, take it a little bit slower, take your time, do it longer, do it as long as it's needed until the horse figures it out. All these phases will work exactly the same no matter the horse. Good boy. All right, so our third exercise that these horses need to learn is the lunging exercise. And like we talked about in our other videos, we don't lunge just to wear these horses out, okay? We lunge for connection. Everything we do on the ground helps us build up to something we're gonna do under saddle, all right? If our horses need to run, I'm not saying there aren't times we'll, where we will put them on a long line and let them kind of run around, but in general, that's not what we lunge for here. We're gonna show you how to lunge for connection and what I'm looking for in this circle when I first start these horses, okay? So right off the bat, this horse hasn't been lunged before. I'm gonna shorten up my rope to about three feet. I'm gonna stand here and I don't move around my horses. I ask my horse to move around me. You're gonna to want to target the shoulder here, not the hip. I see a lot of people try and walk back here and start trying to send that hip. It doesn't work that way. That is your engine, but this is your steering box right here. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do is get control of that shoulder. So stay right here, raise that stick up, use a little bit of a circular motion, give that horse a little bit of direction where you want it to go, start tapping. Nothing's happening, so I'm going to apply a little more pressure, a little more. Maintain that until he tries and release. Ask again. Again, we always start at phase one first. There we go. Ask again. Beautiful. All right, and every time he starts to stall out here, I'll just bring that stick up and ask for a little more energy. Now we have a little bit of a circle going. He's licking and chewing. He's like, oh, I got this. Okay, that wasn't so hard. It's okay. Okay, he's going to lose a bit of the momentum there. Very nice. Okay, so he's getting a little close to me here. I want to bring that stick up and notice how that disengaged tied in there so nicely, okay? He didn't lock his hip in. He didn't try to run toward me. It's okay, it's okay. He didn't put me in a compromised situation because we already worked on the hip yield and he had such a good understanding of it, okay? Send him off again here. Good job, beautiful. He's getting a little too close. I'm gonna apply a little bit of energy there, move him away and send him back off again. It's okay. He has a little bit of misunderstanding about where I want him to go. He's getting a little too close there again. So I just raise my stick up here and make sure he's not any closer than that stick can reach. If you can bring your stick out straight and that horse makes contact with it, he's too close. There we go. There. It's okay. He'd like to go toward the gate there. I'm just gonna keep asking him to move forward. There it is, all right. okay all right he's a little confused here i'm going to shorten that rope back up again apply as much pressure as necessary to get his feet moving again good job looking and chewing we'll let him have a moment there it is good boy there you go good job Good job. Stay with me there. 
Okay, so notice here how he keeps stalling out next to this gate. I'm gonna let the string go from my stick, and when he gets here, I'm gonna tag him on the butt, okay? We're probably gonna get quite a reaction from him because we haven't done this before, but we need to add a little bit, a little bit of energy to those feet and ask him to keep moving through the spot right here. There we go, okay, it's okay. Keep the direction in those feet. There you go, good job. There we go, I'm gonna let him draw toward me there because there were a few times that he tried to suck back and run toward that gate. So when I applied pressure there, he kind of stepped up toward me and said, hey, what would you like? I'm just gonna kind of let him have that. Say, you're safe with me, buddy, okay? He's looking and chewing there. Good boy, good boy. I don't like to work on a lot of desensitizing on the first day because often you'll just have to go back and kind of resensitize them to certain things. Notice how there, when I wanted to add a little bit of energy, I would have hated for that horse to just kind of stand there dull and just take it because I'd worked so much on desensitizing on the first day. So we like to establish a little bit of direction, a little bit of control of those feet before we start working on desensitizing. Um, this also establishes a rapport with the horse. He understands what you want from him and what he needs to give you, okay? If you go straight to desensitizing and that's the first thing you work on, then often this horse has a lot more confusion about these maneuvers than if you were to get those feet moving first and then go to desensitizing. I know I sound like I'm repeating myself there, but that's kind of why we take this approach to it, all right? Let's go ahead and send him off again. Nothing's happening, there it is. All right, he's getting a little close, so again, I'll raise my stick up and just bump till he steps away, very nice. There we go, he figured that out faster. Step him away, good job. Let my string go, tap him on the butt, much better. Stay away from me, there you go. There you go. There you go, beautiful. It's kind of in and out and all over the place here. Right now we're just trying to get some consistent energy in those feet in the right direction. Good job. And I'm always gonna disengage over here on the opposite side than he wants to, okay? Good job, very nice. All right, now we're gonna go the other direction. Switch it up a little bit. Establish in direction both ways before um, this horse kind of gets his, in his mind locked in on one direction. Because often if you work on one direction too long, then what happens, it's okay, it's just a string. Then what happens is when you try to send the horse the other direction, he's so convinced that he needs to go, say to the left to make you happy, that you're gonna struggle a lot more to send her to the right. So be sure you don't work on one side too long or, um, or in some instances, you see people work on one side on one day and then try to go back the next day and the horse is so locked in on that direction that he can't figure out how to go the other way. It's okay. He keeps checking in with me here, which is really nice. The hip is staying away from me. This is really, really cute. Here in a minute, once he's a little more confident, I'm gonna bring up that energy and ask him to trot, but not quite yet. Add a little more energy there, gently slap the ground and then start tagging him on the hip. There we go, beautiful. It's okay. There we go. And as soon as I get that movement in those feet, I put everything back in a neutral position. So I don't keep swinging that stick. I don't leave it up in the air like this. I don't leave my hand up in the air. I bring everything back to neutral as soon as he gives me the right answer. This side is so much better. Good job. Just a little more. Right through there. All right, let's disengage now. Beautiful. I tried to block me there just a little bit, but then he came back to center very nicely. Okay, so those are the first three exercises every horse should learn on the ground. Uh, tomorrow, in our next session, uh, we'd often work on a little bit more desensitizing. We'd cover these exercises again. But I hope these exercises help you, whether you're working on starting a colt, or you've got a more mature horse that could just use some more polishing up on the groundwork. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time.